Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the best games of 2024, as you can see, and now it's time for a Spotlight Wednesday, and we're going to talk about the Oregon Ducks today. Dan Lanning has been laying foundation in Eugene for the last couple of years. He has been doing incredible things on the recruiting trail, in development, and putting together this roster the way he likes it. And now it's time to execute. They were very, very close to executing last year. They were a couple of plays away from the playoff a year ago, but at the end of the day, those plays were not made. So this year is a big time year for them. There is a ton riding on him, and they can do any number of things. So let's jump right in. Let's break down their offense, their defense, their schedule, and then get to kind of what I expect from them. And let's start with the offensive side of the ball. So the quarterback room we actually talked about yesterday when we were ranking position rooms because it's the best quarterback room in the entire country. Uh, Dylan Gabriel, in my mind, is the most important and impactful transfer in the country. Maybe not the best player in the transfer portal, but definitely can be the most impactful for this Oregon team and for the Big 12 or Big 10 as a whole because Oregon's going to be a big time player there. And then you add someone like Dante Moore. He's not far off in terms of being super important to that team because losing someone like Bo Nix is not easy to replace, but replacing him with two guys where if one goes down, you're not too worried about putting the other guy in there is a luxury that not a lot of teams have across the country. I think Texas would tell you they feel very confident about putting Arch Manning out there. I think Georgia would tell you they feel comfortable with Gunnar Stockton. Um, there are not many others. Ohio State, I think, would feel comfortable um, with Devin Brown, but there are not a lot of quarterback rooms that would be as comfortable, or probably none, than Oregon. Um, and then let's get to this wide receiver room, uh, really just this receiving room in general. Uh, Tez Johnson and Evan Stewart is a terrifying duo for any uh, defense, for any back end. This group is going to be just insane, and I think they will play as big of a role in this Oregon run as anyone. And then you add someone like Treshawn Holden, who is a transfer from Bama, who had a really kind of an up-and-down year, made some big-time plays last year, um, can definitely be their big-time player uh, in this upcoming year, and won't have to play too big of a role with those two guys in front of him that are going to be the mainstays of this offense. And then you add someone like Terrence Ferguson at tight end. He can be incredible this upcoming year, and Dylan Gabriel will have plenty of players to uh, throw to, plenty of weapons to play around with, and it's about as good as you could possibly hope for if you're an uh, Oregon fan. And then the running back room is very, very solid. Uh, not quite as talented as a year ago with Bucky Irving and Jordan James, but Jordan James is still on campus, which is absolutely huge. You have someone like Noah Whittington to add depth there. Obviously, losing Bucky Irving is huge, especially in the uh, um, receiving game. I think he was a huge time, a huge player for Bo Nix in terms of just dump it off to Bucky Irving, let him get you know six or seven yards and keep the drive alive type of thing. So someone will have to be that for uh, Dylan Gabriel, I think, and it could very well be Noah Whittington. I think Jordan James is going to have a huge year, a little bit more of a running uh, back than a receiving back, but is plenty capable of doing both. So very excited to see those guys. I think this is somewhat underrated running back room and could really take the world by storm, especially someone like Jordan James. And then let's get to the position room that all this uh, rides on, that everything in pretty much every offense across the country rides on, which is the offensive line. We talk about them probably not enough, to be totally honest with you, but uh, you got someone like Josh Carnley Jr., uh, a fantastic player that keeps getting better, is a little bit young still, but is still working into uh, form at that left tackle position. You add Matthew Bedford, a transfer from Indiana, uh, who is slated to start with absolutely huge pickup in the portal. Um, obviously losing people like Jackson Powers Johnson, a fantastic center, and Stephen Jones is going to be very tough, but I think they have plenty of depth, and I think they're slowly getting more talented with the younger players that are coming in. We've seen that um, flip in an offensive line over at Texas over the past couple of years, and I think Oregon's doing something very similar, as is Miami down in Coral Gables, I think. So I think this offensive line room will be plenty talented, will be plenty good, and as long as they can give Dylan Gabriel time, he will dice up defenses, I can promise you that. Um, but let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball, and this is a transfer show. I'll be totally honest with you. There are a couple of big-time players coming back for them, but they brought in a ton of transfers that are going to need to hit for them to 
be the big time defense that Dan Lanning absolutely wants out there in Eugene. Um, but let's start up front and let's start with who I think could be the most important uh, transfer and maybe the most impactful, Jamari Caldwell uh, from Houston, a defensive tackle. He is going to be huge for this team. He was an absolute game wrecker, and Houston was great in the run game, and they're going to absolutely need him. He's paired up with Amari Washington in the middle, a good duo, so they definitely uh, are going to need to show out. I think uh, Caldwell is someone that uh, could definitely even be a Big Ten, all, all Big Ten selection, even in the preseason and definitely after the season because he's an absolute game changer, and I think he could be someone that Oregon fans are very, very happy they got in the portal. Um, edge rushing, in my opinion, is where this season will be defined for Oregon, somewhere where they've kind of struggled a little bit in the past, but Mateo Uyunglele, the brother of DJ, is up there going into his sophomore season, only going to become more talented, and he's already pretty talented. And then you talk about someone like Jordan Birch, who's making uh, his second season in Eugene, transferred over from uh, South Carolina after his freshman year, was a five-star coming out of high school, so plenty of talent for sure, um, but definitely has not hit the heights that he would like. And then you have someone like Elijah Rushing, a freshman coming in. I think all three of those guys could make big-time impacts, and they're really going to have to because you got to get to the quarterback, especially in the Big Ten when you're going to play so many good defenses, so many good offensive lines. you got to have some difference makers at the edge-rushing position. So I think that's where Oregon season is really going to be defined. The linebackers are somewhat of an interesting group. I think uh, Justin Jacobs is going to step into a uh, starting role this year after being kind of rotational last year. Um, I think he could, he needs to and could take a big te step forward, but Jeffrey Bossa is the guy that I'm watching at linebacker. He is someone that I really do think could be one of the top linebackers in the country, has remarkable ability, will definitely be the headset guy for this defense and the leader of this defense, so he is super important to Oregon, especially with all of these transfers coming in. Being the communicator, being the leader that he has to be is going to be very important for the Ducks as they go into uh, the summer and then into the 2024 season. And then the back end of this defense is where the portal additions really, really show up. I talked about Jabbar Muhammad earlier, the Washington transfer at corner. You have another guy, Cam Alexander, a UTSA transfer uh, at the other spot in corner, and then Brandon Johnson, a Duke transfer at Nickelback. And just for fun, they added Kobe uh, Savage, a safety transfer from uh, Kansas State on the back end. So it looks like they're going to start four different transfers on that back end of that defense. And I have very few questions about the ability of those four guys. I think they're all remarkable talents. Kobe Savage is a guy that I've been able to watch a good bit in the Big 12, and he's someone that I think is going to jump off the page. Brandon Johnson, another one that is just remarkable uh, during his time at Duke, so very excited to see both those guys play. Cam Alexander I know a little bit less about, but I trust Dan Landing when it comes to evaluating defensive talent, so this group is very talented, but playing as a group will be the biggest thing for them. You got to play as a unit. You got to play as five guys together. So it'll be really interesting to see all of that develop. And I cannot wait to see how this defense comes together because they're going to have to hit on a lot of guys. Uh, but it seems like they have a ton of talent in that room. And as long as Dan Lanning can get a good bit out of Jamar Caldwell, out of uh, Jabbar Muhammad, out of Kobe Savage, out of all these guys that he's brought in, I think they're going to be a big team to be reckoned with. And then finally, let's get to the schedule because as we know in college football, especially with this no division world that we live in now, the schedule can define a lot. Um, so they should roll through their non-con schedule uh, the first three weeks of the season. They do play Idaho. Boise State is a little sketchy, I'll be totally honest. I think that team could be very interesting when we come around to week two of the season, but I'll put that down down as a win for the time being. And then they have Oregon State. They have set up that game for the next two years. Um, I think they should likely win that game pretty comfortably. Oregon State lost a ton of guys to the portal, so I don't necessarily expect them to be rolling uh, very early on in the season. So they should be rolling, uh, Oregon, that is, should be rolling through for uh, the first three weeks. And then they do get a bye before get jumping into conference play. And conference play starts off very nice for them. They actually don't leave the West Coast until October 19th when they go to West Lafayette, Indiana to take on Purdue. Before that, they have a game at UCLA, so get to stay on the West Coast. Don't have to travel too, too far to start your Big Ten play. And then you have Michigan State and Ohio State coming to Eugene. We talked about that Ohio State game 
earlier going to be a huge game for them. They definitely, uh, if they can win that one, they're going to be making waves all over college football. So very excited to see that. But this is a huge stretch for them. If they can go 4-0 and or if they can even go 3-1, and which they likely should against everyone but Ohio State, they'll be in a great position in the Big Ten moving forward into the back end of the season. And it's kind of a back and forth in the back end of the season between tough fights uh, and ones they should likely win. They start with a one they probably should win with Illinois at home. Then they head to the big house against Michigan, which can get very sketchy very quickly the first time they go to the big house, the first time they really go to a big time uh Big Ten Stadium uh, for the first time, so it'll be really interesting to see how they handle that, how everything goes for them there. Um, I do tend to believe that they are a better team today than Michigan is, but a lot can change before that game happens. Um, getting them late in the season especially is not ideal for Michigan because I think they might start the season a little bit slower than they'll finish it. I think they'll finish it relatively strong. They then get Miami at home, which again should be a win. And then they go to Camp Randall, uh, and that one gets really, really interesting. Although, going back to the Maryland run real, uh, really quickly, that one could get very interesting. Mike Loxley is a very good offensive coach, and if they're not paying attention or looking forward to that Wisconsin game or uh, licking their wounds from that Michigan game, they could definitely uh, get upset by the Terrapins. But let's get back to Camp Randall and Wisconsin. That is a game that I'm watching for the same reasons I'm watching uh, Michigan in the big house, a environment that they will not be used to that will be off the walls that day and it'll be interesting to see how they handle all that I think it's going to be very interesting these Big Ten stadiums are very different than Pac-12 stadiums they are a little bit rowdier uh, across the board and I think Camp Randall is towards the top of that list so Wisconsin is definitely a dangerous game slowly getting uh, things under control there if you're Luke Fickle and I think Oregon's gonna have to be on full alert for sure uh, going into that game. Uh, and then finally, they do get uh, their second bye kind of late in the season here, and then they go to Seattle to play Washington. I think that one's going to be very interesting. Tons of energy coming from the Oregon side, I'm sure, in that game because going 0-2 against a team leaves a sour taste in your mouth, that's for sure. So I think uh, they will be coming into that game with a ton of energy. Washington will know much more about them by that time, but Will Rogers likely at the helm there. You have Jed Fish coming in from Arizona, so a lot of unknown. Uh, but we will definitely know much more about that game when it comes around. Right now, I like Oregon to win, but tons can change, so we'll find out later on. But all things considered, this is a very doable schedule. Going into the Big Ten, you were going to have a tougher schedule. You were going to have the Michigans and the Ohio States of the world, but avoiding Penn State, not having to play some of these games on the road, especially Ohio State, is absolutely huge. I think they can do any number of things this year. They could absolutely take the world by storm. They could beat Ohio State at home, win the Big Ten in their very first year, and win a national title. All of those things are totally on the table for Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks, and I think they have a ton of things in place. They are going to have to hit on transfers from uh, Dylan Gabriel is obviously the most important. Evan Stewart, another one on that offensive side of the ball. But the defense, as we talked about, is littered with transfers, especially in that back end. So they're going to have to hit. And it's really a um, questionable pro uh, proposition every single time that you get into the season. So it'll be really interesting. Everything is on the table for this team. They could win a title. I could see them losing four games as the Big Ten physicality kind of gets to them. Maybe they have an injury or two, or maybe these transfer guys just don't hit. So I tend to believe that the win a title, win the Big Ten route is more likely than them uh, falling off a cliff in 2024. But I do think this is a team that can do any number of things. Very, very excited for this team. I think uh, the transfer additions will be the number one thing to watch for sure. Um, but I think Dan Lanning has it rolling. He has the team that he wants, or at least much closer to the team that he wants up there in Oregon. And we saw it last year with Texas putting it together in year three under Sark. I think Oregon could put it together under year three in uh, under Dan Lanning in year three. So very excited to see that. But that will do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference for us. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, 
all of the social pages for so much content and updates. We have people covering every sport you could possibly imagine from basketball to baseball to wrestling to everything. So uh, obviously it's March Madness time. My guy Nelson over on the Basketball Podcast has you covered there. If you're a wrestling guy, uh, my guy Eric has you covered on the Wrestling Podcast. So tons to, on this page. Definitely follow on all of the social pages and follow this uh, YouTube page as well for all of the updates. But thank you once again for listening and I will see you guys tomorrow.